Monday, everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in to our uh, Monday morning message. Um, we've got a couple things I want to go over today. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend and uh, happy Mother's Day yesterday. Uh, we had some nice weather, which was nice here in Spokane. So for those of you here in Spokane, I hope you enjoyed it. Well, let's get to the point of the video here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is buyer closing costs. Uh, for those of you that have gone through our training and listened to the section on all of our paperwork, we talk about how Alliance makes our fee directly from the lender through buyer closing costs. And we're not going to go into a huge explanation of that. You can go ahead and get on the Insider Network website and listen to the call off to see the wizard if you want to hear that in detail again. Um, the point that I want to talk about today, though, is when your buyer or the buyer on your short sale property is requesting seller closing costs and you cannot get them to not take those seller closing costs or need those seller closing costs. Uh, our recommendation, as you remember, is that you counter the buyer back and uh, either lower, even lower the price to try and not get those seller closing costs in there. Now, primarily because it's, uh, that's how we get paid without having to share in your commissions which is the way that we do 95% of all of our transactions because seller closing costs are not needed by the actual buyer of the property. So what happens in the situation where they absolutely have to have them? Well, as we talked about in our training, um, the only way for us to get paid if a buyer needs seller closing costs is, is for the real estate agents to reduce their commission and for us to basically get paid out of the real estate commission. So how does that work? Well. What we've done is we've created kind of three different tiers because obviously if the seller closing costs are 3% of the sale price, then there's a lot more that's going to have to come out of real estate commission than if it's 1% of the sale price that our seller closing costs back to the buyer. So uh, automatically in that situation, we're going to reduce our commission. And again, uh, I believe that there are a lot of buyers out there that don't need those seller closing costs. It's just a negotiation technique. They're trying to get a little bit better deal on the property. So give them a better deal and counter them back. But in those other situations, if it's a 3% seller paid closing cost to the buyer, then Alliance will reduce our commission to 2%, uh, which will require each agent, the selling and listing agent, to reduce their commission to 2% as well. I have a couple, uh, three actual addendums that I'm attaching to this email uh, that you can go ahead and look over. Um, this kind of just a form email that I, or a form addendum that I put together so that it's very clear what's happening in, in our fee and your commission. So um, that's for a two, uh, three percent seller closing cost, selling agent, listing agent, both reduce their commission by one percent, we reduce our fee by one percent, and then that's how it's going to work out. In a situation where there's two percent seller paid closing costs, um, we ask that each agent reduce their commission by 0.6%, so quite a bit different, but we're going to be able to get a good portion of our fee out of the um, from seller closing costs ourselves, so we won't need to take as much real estate commission. And in the, the situation where it's a 1% seller paid closing cost, we ask the agents to each take a half a percent. So uh, again, we're reducing our, our fee um, but we're asking you to reduce your fee so that we can um, basically all make some money on the transaction uh, when buyer paid or seller paid closing costs are required for your buyer. So the next thing I want to talk about, and again, back to those costs, look over the addendums. If you have questions or concerns or you're just confused, uh, send me an email, give me a phone call. I want to make sure that you understand uh, very clearly. So don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions. The next thing I want to talk about is if an LLC or a corporation is making an offer on your short sale property. Uh, this happens from time to time. There are a lot of investors out there and they often just purchase it directly into their entity of choice. Um, a simple tip that I'll give you if you have a purchaser that is an entity, an LLC or a corporation, uh, ask for those articles of incorporation or articles of formation at the beginning. Those are the documents that show who is this LLC who is this corporation, uh, who are the members and, and or the, the signers of, of the corporation. And the reason that that's important is because the lenders want to see that. So rather than us have to come back to you later on in the process and say, hey, we need those articles of incorporation or formation, uh, just send them to us at the beginning and that way we have them. 
So that's a little tip, tip to speed things up when an LLC is involved. Um, communication. I know that communication is critical to the success in, in short sales and your satisfaction with working with us. That's part of the value that we bring and the reason that you're working with us is a combination of our expertise in short sale negotiation and our communication with you. That's why we're doing these videos. Um, that's why you have access to me via email phone. Um, one thing I want to stress is that you know and you're getting the email communication that comes through Manage My Short Sale. That is a critical piece because that is our primary form of communication with you. Rather than just send you a normal email, our team and myself, when we're sending you a message, we're going to do that through Manage My Short Sale. And the reason that we do that is because we have a log of all of our communication, as well as uh, if you're getting those emails, we know you're going to have access to see those. Um, if you're not getting those emails, you can still see them online, but it's a lot more convenient for you as a very busy agent to be able to just get that email on your phone or your computer and see what's going on. So if you're not getting those, please, please uh, talk with us so that we can get in touch with your IT department and uh, help resolve any reasons why you won't, aren't getting those emails. Uh, the other thing I want to say on those, those notes is that you may have noticed recently that we're using a kind of a, a heading in different sections of that email. One of those would be uh, some asterisks and FYI. That is going to come before anything that's just kind of a, hey, this is for your information. Uh, you don't have to do anything on this. Alliance is taking care of it or, or something to that effect. But it's just kind of information for you that we believe to be important. Uh, the other piece and what you'll really want to keep your eye open for is the asterisks with the words agent action required. This is something that our team is putting at the top of the, the section where we're actually needing you as the agent to take some sort of action. We're waiting on a document. Um, we're needing something from you in order to continue processing or proceeding in the transaction. So if you see agent action required within the body of uh, those notes or an email, zo uh, you know, really zoom in on that and make sure that you're looking at what it is that you need to do um, to get back to us so that we can continue and proceed with the short sale negotiation. So anyway, have a happy Monday. Thanks for uh, joining me. If you have questions, don't hesitate to send them to me via email or phone. Uh, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. And uh, we'll keep doing this uh, every Monday. Just little tips, techniques, common questions that we're running into, things that will help the process of short sale negotiation go smoother for you. Um, and uh, again, happy Monday. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.